And then if you're done with that, you can go back to the first page, maybe look at your answer, see if there's anything you would add. And the same thing with the, the other exercises. Just a chance to go back over it again. See anything else comes to mind that maybe you would want to add. Take a minute or so to do that. Now, you can keep these out in front of you because you probably refer to them throughout the group. Shake out your hands. We don't do much writing anymore. <laughs> At least I don't, right? Everything is typed and so I have to do these. Sometimes my hand creams. All right, gang, I appreciate you. So here's, this is the topics, right? This is sort of the issues that we're going to discuss. Transportation. What does it look like today? What are your visions for the future? A bit about cars and automobiles. And then a bit about electric vehicles. Those are the big topics today. Okay, so we'll sort of work through stages and I'll ask a number of questions along the way. Before we begin, I'd like to just get to know you all a little bit better and for you all to know each other better. And first, remember we can take their name tents and turn them towards me so I can read them. Uh, Karen, why don't we start with you and just share with the table uh, name, uh, where about you live, um, how you typically get around, do you, do you drive, do you take the bus, bike, all that sort of stuff. If you have a car, let me know what it is. And a bit of what you do professionally as well. Okay. My name is Karen DeWitts. I live right off 122nd in the PAL, mm -hmm. between like PAL, whole gate area. I'm a cashier right now. Um, I'll say the question. Uh, how do you um, typically get around? Oh, I have a Volkswagen Bug. Mm -hmm. And typically... I, I drive my car quite a bit. I had a bad experience on public transportation. Mm -hmm. I used to take it exclusively, like mm -hmm. Max and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and since then, I'm very careful. Like, I was going to take it today, but then my sister wanted to ride along, so. Okay. But how many miles a year do you think you drive? Just ballpark it. Well, probably 12,000. 12,000. Great. Karen, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Oh, Doug. thank you. Hi. Um, well, I'm Doug, and I live in the downtown area, like Chinatown. Um, I primarily use public transit since I live right there. Everything's just sort of, you know, a few minutes away. Um, but I do own a car, a 99 Buick Regal, which primarily I just sort of use for, um, like, grocery shopping and stuff, you know, when I have to go somewhere that it's not convenient for me to be carrying a lot of stuff, so. Doug, uh, you working? Yeah, oh yeah, I'm a customer service representative. And what, what part of town do you work? Um, that's downtown as well. Okay. Where do you park your car? Um, I have, there's, my building has a parking lot. Okay, so, so a parking on, on yeah. location. Okay, okay. Doug, thank you for being here. Mike? Well, I live near Pell Park, 26 in Pell, and uh, near Cleveland High School. And I do both, transportation and drive. Mm -hmm. More a trans uh, bus, because mm -hmm. my wife. She works, I'm a stay-at-home dad. Okay, so she takes the car most days? Yeah, okay. I take it sometimes, but she, majority of the time she has it. So. One car household? One car. Karen, one car in the household? Two. Two. <laughs> What's your other car? It's an Acura. Acura. An Acura, give me so. Uh, 2008, I think. Okay. Big, small? Uh, it's a uh, four-door. Four-door, okay. I'm sorry. And Doug, one car? Yeah. One car, Mike. I'm sorry. So you're, you're a one-car household. Yeah. Well, I take it sometimes. What car, kind of car do you say? A uh, 40-scape SUV. Okay. Mid-size. Okay. And you stayed home, Dad? How many kids you had? Uh, three. Three kids. All right. What are you? We're age? blended, so okay. I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have plenty of, plenty of parents would come into focus yeah. groups. Even I was not thinking blended, all thinking. together, <laughs> seven, but mine, there's three. There's How many in the household? Three. Three. And what age range? Twelve, eight, and fourteen months, okay. I would say. Brand new. Great. Mike, thanks for being here, too. Yeah. David. Uh, my name is David. I uh, work in sales 
And what else you where we live? Yeah, where about Seattle? Oh, uh, like like in 160 seconds southeast, like in between like Stark and uh, Division. Mm -hmm. um, vehicle. Yeah. Uh, I drive a Dodge Charger 09. My wife drives a Dodge Durango. I think it's a old. I will see. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Pretty, uh, getting around, pretty much drive, drive a personal vehicle, take bus. Work, work, I take the max, but otherwise I drive. Okay. Uh, about how many miles a year do you guys drive? Mm, together, maybe 18, 19,000. Okay. Kids in the household? No. No. David, thanks for being here. Yeah, appreciate it. Zena? Hi. Hi. My name is Zena. I live in the Hawthorne 39th Southeast mm -hmm. area. I get around equal parts bike, public transit, and car to go. I do not own a vehicle. Okay. Um, and I'm working as a nursing assistant mm -hmm. okay. in Holgate and 34th, so real close. Okay, great. Sina, thanks for being here. Help me out. Hoshi? It's Hosh. Hosh, all right. He, he had the, but okay. my, my real name is Hosh Man, so. Hosh, though. Yeah, so all right. some Hosh, yeah. So um, I live in Mount Tabor. I um, work in corporate relations for um, a company downtown. So, and I do have a car. So I use my car for everything because I do a lot of traveling with my work. So I drive a lot, like downtown, mm -hmm. out on the west side of town. And so yeah, I do mostly local though. Mostly local. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. So you know, traveling out of state and just mainly you know, flying. Sure. So. Uh, about how many miles do you think you drive? Mm, roughly about um, 20, 25,000. Okay. What sort of car do you have? I have a um, Chevy Tahoe and I also drive a 2013 Honda Accord and I have a 2013 um, Acura. Three cars in the house? Three cars. Kids? Kids. Dad. Don't live with me, but yeah. Okay. Older. All right. Yeah. All right, Hush. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Rosie. I live in Northeast. I live in 47th and Killingsworth area. And I drive a Honda 99 Honda CRV. Mm -hmm. And my driving has actually been going down. I've been riding my bike a lot more, but still probably 75% driving. Mm -hmm. um, mainly bike to commute to work. Or just around town, mm -hmm. and then car to do like errands and okay. when I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. And I am a bartender. Bartender. All right. Uh, kids in the household. Okay. One car household. Yep. Okay, Brenda. Hi, um, I'm Brenda, and I actually live out in Fairview, which is just north of Gresham. If you're familiar. Um, been in Portland 10 years. I started in our southeast and kept moving out as the rents got higher. Mm -hmm. um, but I uh, own a 2005 Chevy Classic that I drive every day. Um, let's see, I, I'm a full-time substitute teacher. I teach sub for seven school districts, so I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, About how many miles do you drive? I year? probably, um, I do a lot of Portland Public because I get my health insurance through them, so I actually probably do 13 to 15,000 maybe a year. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. one car household? Yes. One car household. All right, great, Brenda, thank you. Mm -hmm. John. Hi, <clears throat> I'm John. I'm a travel director, and I um, try to stay out of my car as much as possible. <laughs> I just moved from Los Angeles about a year ago. Okay. So Portland is a much more manageable city for me. Um, I live near um, Mont Tabor, mm -hmm. and I, um, when I have to use my car, I do, but I'll, I walk, take uh, public transit as much as I can. Okay. And what sort of car do you have? I have a uh, Scion XA. It's okay. a Florida hatchback. Okay. What brought you to Portland? Um, I, Los Angeles is getting on my nerves, and it's a beautiful city, so okay. I moved here. <laughs> All right. John, one car in the household? Yeah, just me. Okay. Great. Quana? Uh, my name is Quana. I stay on 93rd between Foster and Holgate, and I'm a caregiver, CNA. I work in Gresham. I catch the bus. Okay. No car? No. No car, all right. Uh, kids in the My house? Son. He's One 20, son. though. He's 20, okay. Juan, well, thanks for being here. I Thank appreciate you. it. Sasha? Um, I'm Sasha. Uh, I live around 82nd and Powell. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer to take public transit, but I 
drive also. Um, and um, the car that I drive is a Toyota Camry. I think it's around 15 years old. It's not my car though, so mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and I work as a sales associate and I'm also a student. Okay, okay. Not everybody, but most of you have something in common. Did you pick up on what it is? Yeah, well, not all of you have a car. Public transportation. No, is that, maybe that might be something everybody takes. With. You, most of you live in, around the Powell, Hawthorne, oh, Division yeah. sort of corridor. So around there, Doug, you're, you're, you're not in there exactly, but uh, everybody else is. Brenda. I'm not in there, but know, I drive it all the you time. You drive it all the mm -hmm. time. So there's, this is not the only reason we brought you in, but that's one commonality. So you maybe can all sort of vision that, that part of the community. So just, just an observation, and that's, that was intentional on our part, but that maybe you would notice. Okay, so you probably all know the same roads around Portland, drive a lot of the same roads around Portland, or take transit or bike on them. My first question for you with the written exercise is just describe the transportation system right now. We can start big, but then we have us focus more and more locally. But when I ask transportation system, what were the first things that came to mind for you? How is it today? What is the transportation system like today? I think it's excellent. Excellent, okay. I find it reliable. Reliable, okay. What else? Excellent. I think it's stressful. Stressful, okay. Stressful, excellent, reliable. Overloaded. Overloaded. In certain areas, in other areas, it's very inconsistent. Okay, inconsistent, but some areas got a lot going on, overloaded. What other things come to mind? Slow. Slow, okay. It's bad. Bad, okay. <laughs> hectic. Hectic, okay, let's move a little bit, take these a little bit further. We say, David, when you say hectic, what does that mean? Um, I think there's a lot of construction, mm -hmm. there's a lot of Seems like the traffic has increased by the last five, ten years. Okay, so it's been a, you've noticed a change in the last yeah. five or ten years. A lot of traffic and construction makes things mm -hmm. hectic. Uh, Sasha, what do you think? Transportation system today. I think it's changing. I think we have a lot of people moving into the city. Okay, so. okay, so changing people moving into the city. What does that mean practically? Um, I think that uh, we have a lot of stuff in place for a smaller number of people mm -hmm. and so we're seeing a lot more congestion on the roads, mm -hmm. a lot more people trying to take public transit mm -hmm. um, and they don't really have the capacity for okay. all of that. So a system built for a smaller population. Now the roads are getting filled up with cars, our transit's getting filled up with riders. How does it make you feel? Like that's, you're describing <laughs> something but I want to take a little bit further for me. What is, how does that matter to you? I guess it's pretty frustrating mm -hmm. to like have to leave like 45 minutes earlier than I might normally just to get somewhere on time. Okay. Frustrating. In order to get somewhere on time, you have to leave early. That time out of your day that you probably would rather do something else. You're right. right. You, you brought up some old memories of me taking transportation further than just my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. When you do go further, it does get a little stressful. Mm -hmm. And that's something I didn't think about until you started talking about it. Okay. You do uh, have to leave early. Okay. I commute at off hours as a bartender, uh -huh. so at 2 in the morning it's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forget how long it takes at 5 to get across town. Sure. Yeah. When it can take me 5 minutes and okay. 45 minutes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it really feels like it's yeah. that drastic of a difference. How was it getting here today? Um, I rode my bike today, so okay. it was quick and easy. <laughs> when I say transportation system, what things do you, so what, do you think about cars? Do you think about buses? Do you think about Roads? When I say transportation system, what are the things you think about? Buses and trains. Buses and trains? Okay. There's a new bike thing that I keep seeing everywhere. Okay, the, uh, what is it? I the, think it's the, a bike town. Bike, bike, bike town, bike. Yeah. the new bike share program that the city of Portland has just started yesterday. I Too think. expensive. Mm -hmm. Too expensive? Yeah. Okay, but we could have a whole conversation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think of cars and roads as well. Cars and roads, okay. John, you've been here a year. Compare and contrast, Los Angeles to Portland. This, I mean, it's, it's a piece of cake, comparatively mm -hmm. speaking, but I do, even in the year that I've been here, I've noticed that the time that I do spend in my car, it, it's, I'm starting to see, I'm like, this is the reason that I left Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it creeps So I do, yeah, and again, just in the year or so that I... What do you attribute here. that to? Oh, again, I think it's a lot of people moving here, and again, the, the infrastructure just isn't isn't there for larger, I mean, most of the 
freeways are two or three lanes tops, you know, and that there's a point where that is limited, and so kind of it's just about. Hosh, you do a lot of driving around town. You love driving. What's it like to be up there? It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I, I went drive, so, I, so I grew up in New York City, so for, for me it's like, those on-ramp lights just really yeah. irritate me. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, really, it caused a lot of congestion because like when you're trying, as I'm coming here to get today, as I'm trying to get on Multnomah, it's, I'm coming down Grand, and traffic is so bad, but it's really bad because the on-ramp has the lights and everything is backed up from the on-ramp right. onto the main highway. I'm like, just, just people, if you don't know how to merge, yeah. In proper traffic properly, get over, let the person get over, and like, but that those lights really suck, and it takes me about. And I'm driving, I have to leave, like she said, 45 minutes to get to a place I normally would take 20 minutes. Oh, she bring up something I was gonna sort of wait till later. I'll probably come back to it later, but it's an issue that that I wanted to explore a little bit, so I'll ask you a little bit further. Those traffic lights, those signal lights that, on the on ramps. What what do you think the purpose is? I, I think it's to help people merge into traffic better. Help merge people yeah. into traffic better? You think they play a role in trying to help or prevent congestion? If they are, they yeah. do. <laughs> Just poor job of it. Just, just poor job of yeah, it. Do you think good. there are things like traffic signaling, like the on-ramps, anything else maybe that you would come to mind that would help with traffic flow and congestion? It, There's it, a lot of new technology it, coming out. Can it yeah, be used it, in a way that would be helpful it, for it? Not so much here, but uh, when I was in Los Angeles, certain streets that I realized that if I went about 28 miles an hour, mm -hmm. <laughs> that I would hit less stop. stop so lights. if you timed, the lights were timed. <laughs> But, but 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 they are time. Right. Instead of instead of they, no, they are. No, I believe you. But but instead yeah. of going thirty five forty, trying to get across town, if I like just sit back and go, you know what? If I go thirty, which is reasonable okay. still, that I'm not stopping and starting as much. Okay. So I think that again, you know, so, I, I tend to obey the laws okay. and work within them, but because so, I think that they're set, there there is some thought behind it. Okay. I what was, was the speed limit? Were you going 30, to speed limit? Um, the speed limit was 35, and I was going like 28, which okay. is close okay. enough. Okay. So timing, the lights are timed, affects mm -hmm. your behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, she was just about to say something. I would shorten the on ramps. Okay. The on ramps are too short. They're too long. So it takes it when people are merging. It's just all this buildup of just cars, and that light doesn't even help it. Okay. Because it's very simple to merge in traffic. Okay. It's so, like if you're in the lane on closest okay. to the car, just if the car, if you see a car coming, something has to accelerate, something has to decelerate. Let them in the car at the car. It, it just simple, basic, just driving. Just, just the the, the, yeah. the physical infrastructure making a little bit longer to help people merge. With exactly, you. giving people a lot. Of okay. Water. What other maybe innovations, technology or otherwise, would help move people around? I think more and better public transportation. Better public transportation. Okay. How about sensors, so it can tell whether there's actually traffic there? Okay, some sensors. What would yeah. those sensors then do? Take, and if there's no traffic going one way, not turn the light green. Okay, okay. So some smart sensors are yeah. able to monitor traffic flow and make some decisions. A traffic app. A traffic app. What's that, Mike? I think they have, like, news. news. The local news station has a traffic app. Oh, so you can look at it and see like what roads. Yeah, do but I think they can make one better than what mm -hmm. there's out there. What yeah, would that's make? Unless you're texting while you're driving now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Mike, what what would a an effective one, a more effective one? What would that if they, if it existed, how would oh, that make things better? That was just an idea. That okay. Out there. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Stop <laughs> allowing police officers <laughs> to pull people over on the freeway because that kills traffic. So the traffic stops on busy roads, it backs everything up. One police officer pulled over this morning, one officer is sitting out there, just a routine stop, and traffic is just like congested. I'm like, why are you stopping? We get up there, I'm like, everyone stop for this? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Just yeah. Get out there. Okay, what does a transportation system look like in 20 years? What sort of things do you get down? How are things going to be different 20 years from now? It's hard to imagine. It is hard, but do it for Ideally? me. Ideally? Well, we can start with, we can start with <laughs> ideally. What would you like it to see, Rosie? Less cars, more ability to be able to get from wherever you want and walk on a bus here and then get over there and then you ride this bike to there and walk. Why? So less reliant on your own personal vehicle but being able to 
at the same whenever you want, like when you have your own car, it's at your own whim okay. to a certain extent, um, being able to get around that way. Okay, so more people taking public transit, a more effective transit system clears the roads so that when you need to drive, you can zip along faster. And there, okay. are, there are, I think the transportation system is pretty strong here, again, comparatively speaking, but it's very downtown centric, which of course makes sense. But now that things are changing, mm -hmm. that if there's more, not just the spokes that go into the center of town, but like more that are around the perimeter okay. of the community, so that you don't have to go like the um, the north part of Portland's not. The, I mean, it has one line, but kind of the northeast mm -hmm. has the max, but not really. I mean, so okay. if there were some. So there's some infrastructure, there's where the roads go, how traffic moves on the roads, yeah. maybe improving that. Kwana, 20 years from now, what do you think, how do you think we'll get around? What do you think the transportation system will be like? Congested. You think it'll be congested. Why? Because it's already congested now, so it's more people coming here. Okay. Just get worse and worse and worse. Worse and worse. Okay. I just don't see more money going towards it, okay. and so I think it's only going to be worse. Okay. What about, do you think we'll get around the same way? Hmm. I hope I not. Will. <laughs> What's that? I said I will. I mean, if they invented like, I don't know if you're talking about like a teleportation machine or, you know, some new sort of like Segway or something. But I think I'll just stick with cars and, you know, kind of standard. Uh, I do think they'll be much cleaner though in 20 years. Okay. So we mean cleaner, with fuel efficient, less fossil fuel, is that what you mean? Or something yeah, different? I mean, I don't know if it'll be completely off of fossil fuels, but I think we'll definitely need the technology for like electric vehicles okay. in 20 years from now. Okay. I mean, you know, they'll probably be a lot more mainstreamed. Okay. David, how do you think we'll get around in 20 years? What do you think the transportation system will look like? Uh, I think more electric, more like automated. Uh, okay, what does that mean? What does it mean to be like, um, say like if you have the Max or whatever, it's not ran by somebody, it's just computerized. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, same thing kind of with car that it's kind of already getting there, they kind of park themselves, like uh -huh. some of them, so I think it'll just evolve. Okay, okay, think we'll have driverless cars in 20 years? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 How do you think we'll be getting around 20 years from now? I think there'll be more light rails. Okay. More like that, more automated, okay. more like system transit, kind of like car to go. Okay. I think there'll be less personal vehicles. Okay. I don't think that the push for electric hybrid vehicles is going to become affordable at the same rate that mm -hmm. gas is going to go up. And I think mm -hmm. that being able to drive a personal vehicle is going to be a luxury mm -hmm. for the upper class. And so the the push for public transit, I believe, is going to increase. Okay, so maybe more of a push for transit. Gas gets more expensive, harder for everyday folks to afford to buy it, so then they don't drive or can't afford a vehicle as much. Okay. Sasha, what about you? What's, what's your vision for 20 years from now? How do you think we'll be getting around? Um, I definitely think there's kind of like two different paths that we could take, because I agree that there's not a lot of money going towards transportation right now, and we really, really need that to be happening. And so if that doesn't change, um, then we're going to see an enormous amount of, like, like nobody's going to be able to get anywhere because um, everything will just be clogged all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if people realize that that's something that is very real that could happen, mm -hmm. um, then I think we'll probably see more people looking at biking, people who live in the city, um, and then also transportation being, like public transportation being extended out towards like Gresham and Beaverton and other kind of like outer cities. Okay. Um, what if we expand beyond Portland, beyond the region? We think about the country, think about the world. I think we're getting around, how do you think transportation broadly might look yeah. different? Well, I, mean, I think the United States is, I mean, if you go to Europe, I mean, you can get, like they've got high-speed trains, their general public transportation is so much more advanced. It's because they didn't go towards the car culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that they have you know, and traveling there across the country or across the continent is, is much more advanced than it is here. I mean, we're just, we're probably a good, I would say, 50, 60 years behind. Okay. Brenda, how do you think well, the transportation system will change in 20 years? Well, I, I guess, um, you know, ideally I would like it to get better and more public transportation, mm -hmm. but I really don't, I, I just don't see it happening. I just mm -hmm. 
see less money being put to it, doing a lot of fixes on things that absolutely have to be fixed, but not thinking progressively. For instance, in Portland, we desperately need a third bridge over the Columbia, desperately, because the 5 and the 205 are a nightmare for about half the day, you know, and it's just between the money and the environmentalist, it's just been something that's not happening. And if it's not happening now, 20 years, I don't know if it's gonna make a difference. So I'm hearing a lot of, we need more public transit. Maybe some thought that congestion might get so bad, or cars might get so <laughs> expensive that people will have to get out of them. Maybe onto public transit, maybe onto biking, walking, other modes of transportation. So let me ask, what's the future of cars in 20 years? Hopefully, I think there's that would be nice if we could have solar cars, electric cars, things okay. that are self-driven. I mean, in an ideal world, that would be great because the congestion wouldn't necessarily be there if, if cars self-drove and people would basically, like the Uber situation where a bunch of people get into a car, you punch in where you need to go, it drops you off the okay. most convenient way there. So when I asked the question about what was it here, Karen, do you think personal vehicle use will stay the same increase or decrease in 20 years, what did you say? I think it's going to increase. I think it'll increase. Yeah, because I, like them, I don't see where they're spending money on the public transportation. And in all honesty, it's not as safe as it was even five years ago. Okay. Five years ago, exclusively, I rode the bus, mm -hmm. I took Max, mm -hmm. um, I worked downtown, so I would take the, uh, the bus downtown. And so would a self-driving car, in the way you think about it, would a self-driving car be a personal vehicle or not? It would be kind of a communal vehicle. You just get in it, punch in where you guys mm -hmm. are going. The vehicles are all situated mm -hmm. in a way that this vehicle is going in this direction. Her and I would get in. She'd punch in where she's going. I'd punch in where I go. You pay, do whatever you're going to do, and you go off. Okay. Josh, what's the future of cars? 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I can only really imagine where we would be in 20 years from now with cars. Best guess, be creative here. Um, hover cars. Hover cars? <laughs> For real? I really, I would love to have them. <laughs> that would be the, the ideal yeah. hover cars. You know, when you get in a traffic jam and you don't really necessarily have to go that route, just flip your wheels yeah. up and shh. Back to the future. Back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> go back, back, and just go somewhere else. What if we don't have hover cars? What if we're what if we're bound to the to terrestrial transportation? I um, I don't. I, I really can't say okay. about cars. Okay. Yeah, I can really okay. tell you. Okay, Rosie, what do you think cars will be like in twenty years? I think I agree with the idea of more you know, cars and more shared, less people having their own individual car, mm -hmm. especially because of the convenience of, the, of it. Mm -hmm. and I, even though I have a car, I still will use car to go or Uber or um, those types of things and not be tied down to one specific thing. Okay. Or just general car share, so less, more and more one car families, more maybe shared neighborhood people or communal car situations. Okay. Okay. Remind me again, who has a car at home, personal car at home? Raise your hand high so I can see. Kwana and Zena are the two that don't. Who likes to drive? Who likes to drive? All right, several of you. Mike, what do you like about driving? It's fun. It's kind of like a, it's a good word. Like your little bit of freedom you have. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah. David, you too? It's the same way I felt from when I was a kid, so I should be. No, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, like you said, freedom. Um, you know, you can just go. Mm -hmm. You know, just get up and go when you get ready. If, um, I think cars are more, most of the time, speak about your personality, mm -hmm. you know, as far as what you, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zena, you don't have a car, <laughs> but you like to drive. I do. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. Um, I actually really enjoy the mechanics of operating a vehicle. Yeah. Especially a stick shift vehicle. Uh -huh. Listening to it and knowing that it's doing exactly what I'm telling it to do uh -huh. is a pleasurable experience for me. Yeah, okay. Why don't you have a car? Um, it's not part, it's not necessary for my mm -hmm. life here. Mm -hmm. I have a bike and I live relatively close mm -hmm. to where everything is happening. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to go to, I don't know, wherever you, wherever you might travel to, do you rent a car or do you, if you wanted to go to, I don't know, where you like to travel to? I road trip to the Bay pretty regularly. 
Okay, so how do you get there? I rope in friends. It's okay. like, hey, we're taking your car next weekend, let's go. Okay, okay. Raise your hand if you don't like to drive. Don't like to drive. <laughs> Sasha, why not? It's fun, it's uh, freedom. No. The mechanics of it all. Uh, I actually just got my driver's license like three weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and before that, uh, I, li I was taking the bus all the time, um, and it just wasn't something that I could do anymore because um, I'm I now have a fiance, and we like had to get all over the place, um, and so I kind of had to learn how to drive. Um, Sasha, how old are you? Twenty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and like, because we were living in Ashland for a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, and so we'd have to drive back and forth to see our families, um, and so I finally got my license after moving back here. Um, and I just, it's like, it's stressful, mm -hmm. and I just feel like I want to have like a sign on my car that's like, I'm so sorry, <laughs> like I know I'm doing a bad job, <laughs> and I got my license three weeks ago, just like, don't drive too close to me, and we'll be fine. Um, Caution, you drive right <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, so I just, I feel bad, I like feel bad for being on the road. You think this is a temporary so condition that you have, or I think, it, you know, once you get some more experience, that you'll be like, driving is something that I can see that I would enjoy, but it's just, I'm learning right now. Yeah, I definitely, I feel like that it's a little bit of that. Like, when I'm driving at night and there's not a whole lot of people uh -huh. on the road, then I don't mind it so much. But right. like, in the middle of the day, when I'm like, surrounded on all sides in this horrible okay. box, I like, <laughs> die. Brenda, you don't like driving. I hate driving. I've been driving for 37 years. <laughs> And I'm so sick of driving. Yeah. I just took a three week three week vacation out of Mexico, San Diego, and Los Angeles. Took all public transportation. Part of the vacation was never having to get in the car and drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think my blood pressure went down about twenty points. Yeah. yeah. I hate driving. It's stressful. It's what, just, what about it is What about it is stressful? Just the fact that you can never be sure you're gonna. I hate being late, mm -hmm. so you can never be sure what's gonna hold you up. Uh -huh. Even and I leave way early to everything. And I live on the other side of two hundred five, like I was uh -huh. saying. And that is a nightmare for like four hours in the morning and four hours in the afternoon for all the people going to Vancouver. I just want to get around them, you know? I just want to drive on the side of the road and get around them. Yeah. But as I've gotten older, I've just gotten less patience with it. I just, I don't, yeah. if I could have a driver, I would. <laughs> Actually, I did public transportation the first couple of years I lived in Portland, but I lived inner southeast. Uh -huh. As I moved out, they become less and less available. Mm -hmm. Now it's an, just it would take me an hour to get downtown on the bus from where I live now. Quana, would you like a car? Huh? Would you like a car? Um. Yeah. Yeah. What What would it mean for you? Um. I mean, if I wanted one, I could get one. Okay. So you choose yeah. not to have one. Yeah. Why do you choose not to have one? Because I like relaxing in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to have to. Someone else can take care of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Great. All right, I'm gonna, we're gonna continue this conversation about cars and vehicles and transportation, but we'll move on a little bit. I'm gonna just call out some different things, some different types of stuff. And I just want your first reactions, okay? So we won't go into it too deep, but I'm, I'm curious about those first things that come to, come to your head. Uh, what about things like rideshare, things like Uber and Lyft? So what are the first things that come to mind for you? Never tried it. Never tried it, okay, what else? I just, I'm, like I'm really like, the companies that have created those, and that's great, but I, I get concerned about all the information that's being retrieved okay. about you're getting picked up here. I just feel like it's too invasive. Okay, too invasive. All right, it's another privacy. reaction. Uber, okay, go ahead. Uber, Lyft, things like that. I think it's too expensive. Too expensive. Like, if I, I, I would have to make a day where I'm like, I set aside some money to take some, have somebody else come pick me up and take okay. me somewhere. I, I think it's enjoyable. Yeah? Gets yeah. Like go to the airport, you just you don't have to call and have your family take you. Uh -huh. You just call them; they are there. They take you. You give them a little bit of money and call it good. Okay. Unsafe. Creepy. Unsafe. Yeah. Creepy. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're gonna move on to another one. <laughs> if I say connected vehicles, connected vehicles, what comes to mind? Anything? Anything? Train. Trains. Like a motorcycle with a little sidecar? Like <laughs> okay. Okay. Nothing. Driver assisted vehicles. Driver assisted. Google. Google? <laughs> Tesla with their 
auto drive, okay. not an auto driver that you have to be aware the whole time. Okay, so that's what you So you are up. assisting it. Okay, and okay, so maybe Tesla and its technology that you have to pay attention to, but but not, but not. Anything. Okay, what else? <laughs> driver assisted vehicles. Okay, nothing. Autonomous or driverless vehicles. Boo. Boo? No, never. Yeah. Never. <laughs> okay. So we'll come. I want to come back to you. Want to hear some other? No, never. The future. Yeah, I. Not now. I'm going to need it. You're going to need it, Karen. Why? <laughs> because I'm almost 60, uh -huh. and there'll come a time when I can't drive. Mm -hmm. And I think that it'd be nice to be able to take and get into something, punch my mom's address in, or not my mom's, but my sister's at that point in time, hopefully, mm -hmm. and and go there. And so I think that there is a big population that need the security of their own vehicle, mm -hmm. but aren't mentally capable of doing okay. it. So okay, so maybe that as you get older and and not able to drive yourself, they'll still offer you if it if they existed some yeah. freedom to yeah have the some independence. To, okay, some independence. Okay, boo, <laughs> independence, <laughs> driverless vehicles. What else comes to mind? Google. <laughs> Google. Yeah, I mean, I think the complete. I think I think that there is a point where I just wouldn't trust the safety of it. It's still a machine, and the machine yeah. can still malfunction. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I know that things are computerized in there, but there's usually, you know, with a plane, a train, mm -hmm. there's someone there to mm -hmm. grab the controls, and I, I think I, I would still be really hesitant okay. about. You think people safety. are safer? I do. Okay. Yeah. I okay. do not. I think yeah. that machines would actually be oh. more capable of <laughs> noticing things that people don't. Because I know how bad of a driver I am. <laughs> Even though I'm, well, I'm learning to admit that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when something thing. goes wrong, though, I think that, that a person, I think there's a survival instinct that we have that a machine that doesn't doesn't have that will kick in. See, and I think of situations <laughs> where, like, autopilot and a lot of crashes that have happened have been because of people trying to take over the system and uh, not understanding. Yeah. So there is a conflict between mm -hmm. the machine and the people yeah. and where yeah. that, like, huh. balance lies of taking it over or not mm -hmm. that I don't think it'll be a smooth transition, but I think ultimately it would be better for people. Mm -hmm. David, driverless car. What do you think? Um, automated. Mm -hmm. More seamless. Mm -hmm. um, but do you want to get in one? Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What else? Sasha, driverless cars. No. no. I don't I don't like any kind of robot that does stuff for you. I would rather <laughs> just do it myself. Okay. <laughs> Doug, jump in here. Uh, that's my whole thing is I just can't trust robots. I hate to be the guy to invoke Terminator and Skynet and the... <laughs> yeah. Focus group, but that's just how I feel. <laughs> I'm totally against it. I would, I mean, granted, it's like, yeah, people are going to screw up, but with human error, somebody's, you know, I can hold a human accountable. Uh -huh. If a robot malfunctions and drives me off a cliff or runs someone over, <laughs> like, who's to blame? Like, there's not going to be any justice there. I just don't, you know, I don't, don't like robots. It's like a whole thing with me. <laughs> uh, Karen, I want to come back to you. Anybody can jump into this question, but you brought up something that I, I think is interesting. Um, autonomous vehicles, you want to in the future be able to get in one to be able to go where you need to go without having to drive yourself. Would you be willing to share that ride with somebody else? Yes. I, I like people in general, mm -hmm. and Dad, that's one of the reasons why I like a group. Mm -hmm. You sit and chat with someone you don't know. I, I like that aspect of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't know who they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know the Uber driver. Mm -hmm. I get in there and mm -hmm. on the bus I talk to, you know, if I'm riding public mm -hmm. transportation, I'll talk to whoever wants to chat. Okay. But who here would be comfortable taking it? Let's imagine a world where driverless cars work. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's move to that time, whatever sort of work. Who would be comfortable, you think, just getting in a car with somebody else? It's going to go where you need to go. Okay. Rosie, you would. Most of you would. Okay. Uh, Zena. Why? I've done a lot of it. Yeah. And I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> you can get unlucky anyway. Okay. Okay. So you've driven into with strangers in a lot of other situations. And yeah. Yeah. Rosie, you would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. John, you would. Yeah. I like. I have no no problems sharing. Those who'd be comfortable. Any of you have kids? 
Yeah. Would you send your kids in a driverless car? Right. Imagine the car works. We're going to imagine a world where the car works. Uh, you wouldn't, David. Why, why, why not? Uh, I don't know. I think with my kids, I think I'm very protective. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, I think it's different when, when dad gets in there versus when you get in there. It's like the, I don't know, I guess it's the unknown. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it would so possibly, would there be an age where you feel more comfortable? Oh yeah, eighteen, seventeen, mm, sixteen, fifteen. Maybe high schoolish. High schoolish. Yeah, somewhere in there, that age bracket. Okay, so David's some uncomfort or discomfort, but maybe high school to get a little more mature. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mike. Yeah, would you feel pretty much the same way as David. Okay. Yeah. About high school. Sixteen, yeah. Okay. Okay. Would you let? Uh, an old, an elderly parent get into a driverless car with a stranger? Probably not. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Because they're, they're vulnerable and you don't know what's out there. Mm -hmm. Elderly people get taken mm -hmm. advantage of a lot. Mm -hmm. And What if it was a solo, right? A solo? Yeah. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Karen? Basically, but, no, people, no, no, no. older people get on the bus all the time. Now, you'll see elderly people riding the bus, which mm -hmm. can be unsafe at times. I have personally have problems. But I, I think that it gives you a sense of independence. And even like my mom, she likes to take and ride the bus. Mm -hmm. She's like almost 80 years old. She likes to ride the casino bus. And at first I was just like, oh my gosh, my mom's going by herself and she's going all this distance yeah. with people I don't know. And she has basically kind of blossomed since she started doing this. It gives her a sense of independence. It makes her feel like, okay, I can do this without any, there's four girls and we hover over. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I would let my mother ride, mm -hmm. ride a Hoover or, or anything mm -hmm. with another person. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that you need to be able to have some kind of independence even you know, even when you are old, I guess. Mike, would you allow your, again, imagine this world where driver's cars work. Mm -hmm. Would you allow, say, what's your youngest? Th 13 months old. Okay, so maybe over a year. <laughs> well, eight, 13 months, what are, they, what are the next ones? How old? Eight. Eight. Would you allow your eight-year-old to get into a driver's car by himself to, mm -hmm. go, to, to, to go to grandma's house or to no. go? No, because he's not mentally ready to... Okay. Do that. What age do you think they'd be mentally ready to take one by himself? In my mind, I'm picturing 16. 16. So same, about the yeah. same age with somebody else or by themselves. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I'm going to throw another word out there. It's been mentioned already. Electric vehicles. First thing that comes to mind. Electric vehicles. Tesla. Tesla. Like range. Range, uh, okay. Charge range. Charge range. Oh, like the little charging stations mm -hmm. that they have built in some places. Okay, so you think of the charging stations. Sean thinks of the range. Rosie thinks of... Saving money. Sa saving, you think of saving money? Okay, what else? Saving money, range. Quiet. New. Quiet. New. Renewable resource. Renewable resource. Okay. Hosh, electric vehicles. Not enough power. Uh, okay. Uh, not enough power for what? For if you're driving on the highway or if you're on a freeway, it just don't have, doesn't have to pick up and go like you have one. Okay, the not to pick up and go, not the top end? Not the top end, yeah. Is it top end speed or is it acceleration? Acceleration. So acceleration is a little bit weaker than a gas operated car. So okay. Then, yeah. And then the top end maybe not? Top end is, yeah, and that's strong. Okay. Oh, what do you think of Tesla's? I mean, Tesla's, I mean, but I mean, I don't think I, I, Tesla's are great, but I. Most people wouldn't be afford a okay. Tesla, right? So, Do, so maybe my question is: Is it when you say not fast enough, not enough, get up and go? Are you? Do you think that about all electric vehicles, or or is it a function of the technology, or is it a function of cost? It's a function. It, it, it will probably be a function of cost because Tesla is probably the only car that I know that would probably have the top end speed. But other than that, the Prius and all the other okay. cars would be just your basic. Okay. Putter around, right? Around the yeah. community. Okay. The, just the EV one that came out in 1999-ish. I mean that they were you could lease them for a while, but they I 
a friend of mine had one that like zipped, like it accelerated okay. with no problem. And I mean, it was smaller. Yeah. You know, it's a two-person vehicle, but it, that was and that was, you know, fifteen, sixteen okay. years. I'll come, I want to come back to that yeah. in, in a second. Electric vehicles. First thing that comes to mind. Probably expensive. Expensive. Okay. Quana. Um. Gas saver. Gas saver. Okay. David. Too small. Too small. <laughs> all right, all right, Doug. What about you? Electric vehicle. Uh, they're kind of a punchline, aren't they? Hmm, how so? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like most of the time I hear about electric cars, it's a joke. Mm, what's, um, the, what's the joke? What's well, the funny? You know, like I don't know. Like oh, they go so slow. You know, similar, just kind of funny versions of what people are mentioning. They don't have much acceleration, or they've got, you know, a. Uh, I hear a lot of jokes about how quiet they are. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just sort of things where it just seems like that like there's potential there but because it's such a new technology mm -hmm. in its infancy that you know maybe people kind of look at it as like a novelty or mm -hmm. I'll look at that mm -hmm. um, so when I say punchline it's like I don't know it's just sort of one more hurdle that electric cars would have to get over before okay. they can be mainstream okay. where like everyone had one who would be well let me ask the question different uh, anybody want to make the case for an electric vehicle? I, I, I yeah. I mean, I, I have a limited experience with yeah. them, but actually, the people think it's a new technology. But the first one of the first Model T um, Fords was actually electric base. and they, it became easier for that. So I mean, that technology goes back to the first car, and then um, in terms, I think the main issue has been the batteries and the rechargeability of them, and and having a a charge that will last, you know, long enough for a day, you know, to get you where you need to go. But I think that that has gone from, from like, you know, 35, 40 miles to over 100 in the last 15 years. And I think the main issue right now is the, is the um, battery storage and, and getting the cost of the battery down to a place where it is more affordable. But the technology has been there at least for 20, 25 years. And so it's just... I think the fossil fuel industry has not wanted it. To, I mean, the EV1, you could only lease them, and then they, they um, once your lease was up, they recollected them, and they were all destroyed. So let me ask, so and the, an, an answer could be never. <clears throat> so let me promise this. The answer can be never. Do you think there'll be a time, or how long will it take for electric vehicles to be more common on the road than gas-based vehicles? Who thinks in the next five years there will be more EVs than on gas-based vehicles? Who thinks in the next ten years there will be more electric vehicles than gas-based vehicles? In the next twenty years? Okay, so what's going to happen, Rosie, Doug, Karen, in twenty years from now? Why would that flip happen? I think they're going to become more, affor more affordable. Okay. There's be, there already is a push towards going away from fossil fuels, mm -hmm. so I could see some subsidies or incentives for everyday people to be able to buy them so it's not just the $100,000 vehicles that are not feasible for anyone to really buy. And I think that for a lot of people that do smaller driving, the long distance isn't as much of a problem, and if it's just a vehicle to get you to work and back, mm -hmm. and, it, and it's affordable and cheaper to operate, um, and I could see it getting towards there in 20 years. Okay, are electric vehicles inherently better than gas-based vehicles? Like you say, it's affordable. If they can bring the cost down, like is that the reason that people aren't driving electric vehicles? If now? they could become cheaper than gas vehicles, mm -hmm. I think that a lot more people would make the decision to drive a electric vehicle based on the cost than based on the actual environmental. I think that would be a bigger selling point for the general population. Okay. John, you're not in your head. It's yeah, I think it's really about economics mm -hmm. that. Um, unfortunately, gas has become cheap again, cheaper, relatively okay. cheaper again. And I mean, ultimately, I mean, I think there's just that that resource is limited, and I mean, the destruction with some of the the fracking and stuff. That I think once that becomes, if that if fossil fuels remains the fuel, that people are going to realize the impact and the destruction that that. I mean, the communities where there is frac fracking. It just disrupts. I mean, water supply. It's just and until that hits the general mm -hmm. populace. It, yeah. David, are electric vehicles ever going to replace 
gas-based vehicles. Maybe in the next lifetime. Next lifetime. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would have to in that next lifetime? What would what would be different about electric vehicles or different about the world that would make? Um, I just think at that point it may be more of a you don't have a choice type of thing. Like it would just be like the uh -huh. only option. Uh huh. So that's because the government says it's the only option, or because that's all car, car makers make, or why would that? Yeah, be? I was thinking like maybe the gas will run out. I'm like, okay, this okay. is the only option. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm going to use some words to describe electric vehicles, and if you agree, I want you to raise your hand. Okay. Electric vehicles are affordable. Raise your hand for me. Electric vehicles are affordable. Nobody. Electric vehicles are safe. Okay, about half of most of you electric vehicles are safe. Electric vehicles are fun. <laughs> a couple of you, a few of you. Electric vehicles are cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, they're cool. Uh, uh, let's see. Electric vehicles are for families. In the future, Rosie wants to, okay. Uh, let's see, electric vehicles uh, accelerate quickly. Can they accelerate quickly? I don't really know. Don't know, don't know. What questions do you have about electric vehicles? The recost that plays for the battery. Okay, good question. How much is, how long does the charge usually last? Okay, how long does the charge last? Okay. How um, accessible are charging stations? Yeah. Where are the charging stations? I never even considered owning one until I got my own house because in an apartment, mm. how are you ever going to charge your own, you know? Okay. And they're building all these nice, fancy new apartments, but I don't think they're building charging stations okay. with them. So where do you charge them? <laughs> Can you charge them in apartments? Are new buildings getting built with the structures that would need to have charging? All good questions. How far can you go and charge? Now that's the, that's the big question. Mm -hmm. I mean, because if I purchased a car, I would want to be able to drive far enough that if I wanted to go see my niece in Longview, that I could do that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't want to have to rent a car to go to Longview. Mm -hmm. And that's basically a lot of cars are at that situation. You know, mm -hmm. if you got stuck in traffic, God forbid you'd be stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. you just kind of makes it where I could afford one, but I don't know if I would purchase one unless I can get the mileage up. Do me a favor, take out a little, it doesn't matter, a little corner piece of paper, just tear it off for me. Just tear a corner of a piece of paper off. There are different electrical vehicles out there, I know that. Right on here though, on average, on average, how far an electric vehicle go on a charge? There's a lot of variables, I know, but typically, on average, how many miles can an electric vehicle go on one charge? And you have that? Pass it in. miles, 150 miles, 60 miles, 150 miles, 150, got a theme going here, 300, 85, and 250. Okay, so I get a sense of where, where folks are at. Uh, who here has driven an electric vehicle? Raise your hand if you've driven an electric vehicle. Hosha, what was it like? It was, it, was, it was weird because sometimes, like I said, the acceleration sometimes, like I did when I stopped at a red light, mm -hmm. the engine, I didn't even know the car was on when I hit the yeah. gas. Yeah. Like it would just, would not go and I'm like, wow, like people are like blowing the horn, like all of a sudden it just takes off. Okay. And it was kind of weird for me, like getting used to that after driving a motor um, 
I've heard it. Okay. It's gas. Okay, John, I know you have. Who else has driven an electric vehicle? Anybody? I've driven a Toyota Primus before, one of the hybrid ones. One of the hybrid ones? Okay, yeah. was it all electric or it was a, the gas electric? It was version? gas electric. Okay. Gas electric. Sasha, do you think you would ever get an electric vehicle? Um, I mean, if the cost came down, yeah. then I would. I mean, I don't really care that much what I drive, and so if it was cheap and also I knew that there was going to be like less cost in like buying gas mm -hmm. um, and also less of an environmental impact, then mm -hmm. I would definitely pick that over like a regular car, but I don't feel that strongly okay. about what I drive. You brought up two things I get to ask about. Show of hands again. Are electric vehicles cheaper? cheaper to operate than gas vehicles. Raise your hand. Electric vehicles are cheaper to operate. Most of you think that they are. Are electric vehicles better for the environment? Okay, most of you think that they, they are as well. Hosh, not real sure. Might you, well, let me just ask for your hands. Who here would, if, if cost, if they were cost competitive, okay, whatever that means for you personally, if, if we're cost competitive, who would consider an electric vehicle? Most of you, okay. Brenda, why would you? What would be what would be what would be positive or favorable about electric vehicle? Well, if the costs were the same, then I, the impact on the environment and and the savings over time mm -hmm. compared to purchasing gas, mm -hmm. both. Mm -hmm. Are you in the market for a new vehicle now? Yeah. How <laughs> long till you get another vehicle? I think pa maybe within the next six months. Six months. I'm oh. just, it's hard when you haven't had a payment for a while yeah. to think about it. But yeah, I am and I do need to get a better vehicle. What, um, what are the criteria you're considering? Um, cost is a huge, the biggest one for sure. And then of course the, what it feels like, the comfort level, how mm -hmm. it feels to drive. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if, Hosh is, is correct. I don't want something that's going to put up a hill, you know. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to drive, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a factor. And safety. I mean, I'm, mm -hmm. but I would assume the safety factors are all there with an electric vehicle. Okay. Um, buy or lease? I'll buy. You'll buy. Mm -hmm. um, we think you'll test drive an electric vehicle? Um, yeah. I, I have driven the Toyota Prius, I've, but I don't. It, I think it was part. And I loved it. Mm -hmm. It was great, except at the time I was in an apartment, it was through Zipcar because mm -hmm. I didn't own a car at that time and loved it. Would an electric vehicle, all else being equal, maybe it's all else being equal, this is the right way to say it. Would an electric vehicle have to be less expensive than a gas car in order for you to consider it? Would it have no. to do what? Is there a premium you're worth, you'd be willing to pay? Like, how would you factor cost and all the other things that maybe you would be considering about? My biggest. Um, hesitation period. Of course I would pay a little bit more mm -hmm. because the all the savings down the line would be less, I would just suspect, mm -hmm. without being for gas. But the biggest thing is that replacement battery. I've heard so much mm -hmm. bad stuff about that, you know, mm -hmm. that that's a factor. If I'm going to pay more at the beginning, save down the road, but then in a couple of years I'm going to put out like whatever, 10000 or whatever for a replacement battery. I've heard crazy numbers. So This may be tough to estimate, but best guess, best guess. How much do you think you would save a year in gas? Or let me ask you a different. How much do you think you would save in operating the vehicle with a with in a year uh, with a, with an electric vehicle? Uh, at least five hundred, maybe close to a thousand. Okay, somewhere between five hundred and a thousand. Who else is is considering getting a vehicle in the next couple of years? A few of you, several of you. Uh, Zena. Would you consider an electric vehicle? Absolutely. Why? I think that we use our hunger for natural resources to justify a lot of unsavory political moves. If you consider getting a vehicle in the next couple of years, will you test drive a, a, a gas-based vehicle? I may. Mm -hmm. I've owned a hybrid before mm -hmm. and liked it a lot, so mm -hmm. I would opt for that. You would opt for a hybrid? Yeah. Okay, what are the criteria you'll be using when you choose to buy another car? Um, I will not buy new. Okay. So, the general things people look at when they're buying used, how much is already on it, what's the wear and tear, mm -hmm. um, what the gas mileage looks like, because having owned a hybrid, I know that it kind of ticks down mm -hmm. gradually. Um, those general standards. Mm -hmm. Will you test drive or try out an electric vehicle? 
Would I try it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. Any particular you're looking at? Or you'd no. consider? I'm not looking right now. Okay. Okay. Doug, mm -hmm. would you consider an electric vehicle? Oh, absolutely. Uh, wh why? Uh, the environmental thing is, um, you know, probably the mo most appealing thing for it. What if it's more expensive? Um, well, um, I, that all depends on do I have the money. So if I had the money, I feel that it'd be worth it. Mm -hmm. I know I feel better. My conscience would feel better. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, as long as I could afford it, that wouldn't be a factor. How much more? How much of a premium would be willing to pay? Oh, wow. Um, couldn't be, like, too much more. Like, hey, Give me a ballpark number. I probably wouldn't... Go mm, based on what I'm guessing cars cost, I'd probably say I wouldn't want to go over, like, 25% more. 25%? Yeah, if it's, more. like, you know, one and a half times what the gas powered car costs. Do you think you'll be going into that. the dealership saying, I want to buy an electric car? Or you think you'll be going in saying, I want to buy a car, an electric uh, car is something I would consider? Yeah, I would, uh, the second one, second. I'd probably go in looking for a car, preferably electric, but what do you got? Okay. Okay. Um, got some good questions here. I asked this one in one way already, let me ask it again. A little bit different. Electric vehicles, are they safer than traditional gas-based vehicles? I think they are. Why would they be safer? Because here? there's no gas to explode in the car. Okay. Raise your hand if you think electric vehicles are safer than traditional gas-based vehicles today on the road. Raise your hand high so I can see them. Who thinks they're not as safe? Who doesn't know? Some of you, you don't know. Uh, so no gas, so there's not that flammable fuel in there that could explode. Who else said that they were safer? Raise your hand for me. Brenda, why are they safer? Oh, the same reason. It's just the gas. I would assume all the airbags, everything's the same. Okay. As okay. Uh, David? Unsure? Yeah. Why? I never... Just, I just see him. I just see him zipping around, but I never... Yeah, okay, just never never looked into it. No. No. Okay, Mike, not sure? No, I'm not sure either. But what things would you be considering or thinking about if you're unsure? I would have to just check into it. I don't really know too much about electric they, vehicles at all. Do you think they have to meet the same safety standards or do they have different safety standards for electric vehicles? Same. Probably the same. Different. <laughs> I would So raise your hand if you think of the same. Most of you think that they're same quantum, any sense? I don't know. Don't know? Okay. And does anybody feel like they know the answer for sure? I'm feeling pretty confident. You feel pretty confident yeah. that they're different? Well, I mean, the way that electric systems are set up are different than, um, like, machines and gears and all that. So I'm sure that, like, you know, like, if you had, like, a machine at home when they put that through to test that it's safe, I'm sure that they're putting it through different tests. Well, let me ask you a little bit different. If, I, if an electric vehicle gets in a similar crash to a fuel-based vehicle... Okay, I was thinking about this too hard. And yeah. Do they have to meet the same sa safety standards in that respect? Yes. I would help. They're all motor vehicles. They're all motor vehicles, so they have to go through the same kind of thing. Okay. Okay. Let's see, this is a question that came in from my team in the back. I'll ask it just the way it was asked. If you buy an EV, or would you buy an electric vehicle if it cost, hold on to these numbers here in your head, okay? Would you buy an electric vehicle if it cost $25,000, went 100 miles on a charge, and you could recharge overnight at home, let's say, or at a, one of those electric charging stations maybe you've seen around in less than 20 minutes. Okay, yeah. So those are the criteria. $25,000, 100 miles on a charge. If you bring it home at night, you can charge it overnight. If you want to one of the stations, you can charge it in less than 20 minutes. Those are the criteria. Got those in your head, everybody? Yeah. If you were in the market today looking for a car, Tell me if that is something that you would consider buying. Raise your hand high. 
four of you. Raise your hand if now, if you would not. You know you would not. <laughs> okay. So, Zena, I'm interested in you because you're interested in electric vehicle, but you, that's not a car that you would buy. Why yeah. not? I'm um, going to be using my cars for long trips. I've got family in different cities, mm -hmm. and I'm perfectly competent and comfortable with that one in town. Mm -hmm. And the 100 mile per charge limitation is just a not something I'm interested in okay. on a long road trip. So for you, the car for you is about longer trips. It's not about getting around town. Yeah. Okay. Rosie. Same reason. Also, um, twenty five thousand dollars is a lot, which is why I'd also be looking exactly. for a used car. When I bought my last car I wanted to make cash and I paid thirty five hundred for it. So I would be looking for something more so affordable. What would, what would Potentially you? in the next one I would get a new car, but it with the hundred mile limitation you know, my family's all in Sacramento, so that would be stopping six times, 20 minutes. It's an hour of just waiting to charge um, to get down there. So Remind me, how many cars do you have in your household? One. Just one. Hoish, you have several cars. Yes. You have three cars. Would one of them meet these criteria? No, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. Why not? What, what's, what's not good about this set? It's too much. Okay. $25,000 is too much for me to pay for a car that only goes 100 miles on one charge. And the, the drive time and having to stop and charge for 20 minutes. Like she said, if I'm going anywhere else on 100 miles, I'm going to spend more time charging than I'm driving. So, so let's say a car costs $25,000. Mm -hmm. How many miles would it have to get for it to be worthwhile for you? How many, for $25,000, mm -hmm. it would probably have to go somewhere between 600 miles, okay. 600 miles on a charge. Okay. So well, give me a good yeah. couple states over. So let's, 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 <laughs> come see, let's do what we think yeah. about it, right? Let's think about it the other way. If it got 100 miles, how much less would it have to cost for you to consider it? Basically into the $10,000 to $15,000. dollars $15, Okay. Brenda, what about you? Um, same thing. It's the cost. I would love to consider a used one, but like I said, I don't know about the replacement battery and such, but I would never pay $25,000 for it. What about a leasing option, Brenda? Would that make you feel more comfortable? Say at least something for three, five years? I would, yeah, if, it, if the lease monthly payment was really reasonable. Assume that a, a car got 100 miles per charge. What sort of monthly lease payment would feel like that's a, a fair deal that you would consider? Um, nothing more than like 150 150 per month? I just okay. wouldn't pay that much. Okay. Okay. Sasha? Um, I think for me this is all pretty hypothetical because sure. $25,000 is like not in the cards for me probably a, for like the next five years. What about a lease option? Um, I'm probably the same, no more than like one fifth. Like the, the crappy car that I drive right now, like I probably put $40 in gas a month with the amount I drive. So like... Probably no more than 150 to like have the car all the time and be able to drive. 150 have all the time? Okay. Yeah. How many miles would it need to get? Probably, I mean, realistically, like I don't really leave the city very often, mm -hmm. so 100 miles for a charge is probably fine for me, mm -hmm. but I would like to be able to get further than that. Just mm -hmm. maybe like 200 miles even would be enough for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. When you. We're headed here today to this focus group. You left from work or home, or you left from. Be honest with me. How many of you said, "I'm going to consider the environment or my environmental impact on how I choose to get here"? Raise your hand if you think you consider the environment. A few, a couple of you, okay. Rosie, how how so, and how did it affect your decision? Um, I rode my bike. Okay. I knew that I wasn't going that far in the city, so I didn't need to use my vehicle that could add to it. So, so very low impact, nice way of getting yeah. out of the city and not having any, or very, very minimal. Um, is that a conscious decision for you? I mean, that is, it's a beautiful day out in Portland. Uh, the traffic congestion is going to be tough. Uh, the environmental impact of driving may be something to consider. Like, and there may be seven other things you thought about, but of all the different things you chose, where, where do you think the environment was on this trip? Which here? Today, yeah. here specifically? Yeah. Probably number three. Three. Okay. What do you think it typically is when you're making choices about transportation? 
In your day to day life. In day to day. Probably around around there within the top four or five. Okay. Okay. David, do you consider the environment when you're getting around? You're making choices about how to get from one place to the other? No. No? No? Who's like David? I don't really think about it. Yeah. Kwana, you don't either? No? Mike, you don't? What do you think about Mike? What are the things that are important to you? About getting around? Mm hmm. Like, in what particular? What's that? Like, what? Could be time, it could be cost, it could be convenience, it could be. You have to make a choice, right? From point A to point B. You could take the bus. Time. Time. Time, biggest factor? Yeah. 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 I'm a time guy. Okay. I like to be on time a little bit early. Uh huh. Okay. So having that control. Make me feel powerful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you, how many of you, if you were to purchase a vehicle, would have the environment be, say, after cost? After cost would be the most important thing that you would consider. Just a couple of you. Okay. Brenda, what else would you be considering? Well, I would say it would be third or fourth. All right, so it's on the list. Yeah, it's on the list. It's a thought. It's so give me some of the things that are on your list. Uh, the comfort yeah. of the vehicle and um, the reliability mm -hmm. of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Are electric in, in, the environment's an impact. It's a thought. Okay. Are electric vehicles comfortable? Yeah. I, if, I've only driven that Prius and I loved it. So. Are electric vehicles reliable? I think so. Mm -hmm. Are they affordable? No. Okay. Who else uh, says that environment is, is not on their top two? Karen, what else is on your list? Well, basically for me, it is if I'm going to be able to get where I need to go, if that that's listening to him, just the acceleration. I want to be able to feel like if I need to get out of somebody's way that I can. Mm -hmm. So that kind of opened my eyes a little bit. Definitely, before I buy, bought one, I would want to rent it or test drive it long enough to feel like it was a safe vehicle. I know that the standards are there that make it where it has to pass all the tests that a gas-driven one is. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't have pick up and go, mm -hmm. you're, you're not in a safe vehicle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that aspect is kind of concerning to me. Plus the battery cost replacement. Okay. I mean, that you know, if I you buy it for twenty five thousand, and five years from now you have to put a ten thousand dollar battery system in it. It's just not a physical it, a general vehicle. I want to have something that's going to last for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who here has heard of a car called the Nissan Leaf? Raise your hand. Okay. Can so, uh, uh, someone describe for for Mike and for who else in Quana? What's a Nissan Leaf? What's it like? Someone, Brenda, describe it real quickly. Well, I haven't driven it, but, but just describe the type of vehicle it is. It's just a small, like a compact vehicle, kind of like the Nissan Versa, maybe a little smaller, but electric. Electric. Okay. I'm not here on behalf of Nissan. I just want to use a common, <laughs> a common car that we all all know. Take off another little corner sheet of paper for me. I want you to write two numbers down. Two numbers down. How much do you think a Nissan Leaf costs to buy new? And how much do you think it would cost to lease, a monthly lease for a Nissan Leaf? Again, I'm, it's just a car to use as an example. Yeah, there was a precedent. Are you talking like a base car? Or yeah, just something? I know there's the ranges here. Yeah. So yeah, basically the basic or sort of average model. <laughs> Do I got any more coming in? Yeah, send them, send them my way. So I want to get a sense of, you know, we, we use these, have this conversation, but I don't know if we're all assuming the same sorts of things. So here's what the table thinks. 
to buy a Nissan Leaf about twelve thousand dollars and to lease one seventy nine a month. To buy forty fifty thousand dollars and to lease one thousand dollars. To buy a Nissan Leaf seventy six thousand dollars and six fifty a month to lease. Twenty eight thousand dollars new three fifty a month. $22,000 new, $1,300 a month. $22,000 new, $295 a month. $25,000 new, $250 a month. $28,000 new, $250 a month. $30,000 new, $300 a month. $35,000 new, $160 a month. Twenty-seven thousand dollars new, one eighty-nine a month. Okay, so a range, right? As much as what seventy-six thousand dollars, something like that. Number one, is that the highest there. The lowest was twelve thousand dollars. So that's quite a range. But a lot of them in the in the twenty-five to thirty-ish thousand dollars. Okay, what do you think about that? It's too much. Too much. What else? Mike, do you agree with that too yeah, much? Yeah. Even the least. Yeah, it be, yeah, it becomes. I mean, it's a. It, again, it becomes something that more affluent people can consider, and I think that that's part of some of the the myth creation around it. That mm -hmm. it's kind of a mm -hmm. a vehicle for more affluent, and it's not an everyday or okay. not a car for it's everyday everyone. folks. Yeah. Okay. Okay, what else? Too much for affluent people? Too small for big people. Too small for big people? That's another, that's another good question. We'll come back to that in a second. What it else? seems reasonable enough. I feel my not very educated opinion, or opinion of it, from what I've like seen for commercials and around, that it's more of the affordable version. Mm -hmm. um, and that, but also a choice that someone's making to purchase that for its benefits mm -hmm. and kind of being like the same thing with the Prius when it came out as being like the forerunner of like look how good I am and how, how much I care about the environment so I'm going to be the first one to do it and if you can afford it and it's I think it's comparable to other cars within that same range okay of a new car. but okay the Leaf is actually a four-door hatchback if I'm not mistaken so I mean in terms of size I mean you, it's probably comparable to a sedan Okay. In terms of interior, plus there'd be again comparable storage space. Take out a sheet of paper, just or your packet here. Just go to the uh, a blank, the very back of its blank. I want you to take fifteen twenty seconds. Just go to the very back, the back side. Right? Isn't the back side? No. 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 Find a draw a box <laughs> where we have a little bit of space to write some stuff. I'll figure it out. What I want you to do. What are the first words, descriptors, that come to mind of who, who is an EV driver? Who is the sort of person that buys an electric vehicle? Write it down. I want to know what comes to your mind first without hearing anybody else. So write it down. Give you 15 seconds here. Who's the sort of person that buys an EV? I just about, I, about a Nissan Leaf. What other EVs are on the market? Name them for me. That Honda has a. I don't know what it's called though. Yeah, Honda has something, but not sure what. What other EVs are on the market? I think Ford has a Fusion Edition that's all electric. Okay, a Ford Fusion all electric. Well, does, is the Prius on an all electric or is it just that a hybrid? Yeah, there's a Prius I think that's all electric. Maybe there's a Prius all electric. What else? What other EVs are on the market? Name them. Tesla. Tesla. There's, I think BMW has a an all electric, but I don't know the model number. Okay, BMW right. maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody? John's got some ideas. Who's, Any, who's, who's the one that has the truck? Is it Chevy or maybe Chevy's Honda? got a truck? Anything else? I've, I've seen a truck hybrid. Okay. Can you recognize if you see a car in the street? Do you know if it's an EV or not? Only if you're standing outside because you don't hear it pass. <laughs> <laughs> Only okay. the leaf because that's the only one. That I yeah. Okay. yeah. They do have those buses that say. Sorry. No, it's all right. So uh, maybe it's a bus on the side. Okay, so when it says it real big, I know. That should be easy. <laughs> um, the new uh, Denali, like the Chevy um, Denali, has like hybrid on the back. Okay, so maybe yeah. there's hybrids as well. Yeah. All right, David, what did you get down? Who's an EV driver? What are they like? Uh, I put in environmentalist. Okay, environmentalist. Okay. Kwana, who drives an EV? I put a teacher. A teacher. Okay. Why did a teacher come to mind? What is it about a teacher? I don't know. I just can picture teachers driving. <laughs> okay. okay. Is that a, is that a, you feel that way too, Mike? Yeah. What does that mean to you? Like, what do you visualize? What do you see? Just a happy, nice old teacher just trying to do their part. <laughs> trying to do their part? Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Great. Great. Uh, uh, Brenda, who drives an EV? Uh, I'd love to be that one. Actually, <laughs> I said middle class because the, just the cost at this point still. Okay. Okay. Middle class. Brenda, if I can ask a personal question, full-time substitute teacher, do you consider yourself middle class? No. Okay. So, so does an EV seem out of reach for you? I probably could afford one. Uh -huh. It's just that I wouldn't spend that much. Okay. You know, I just wouldn't. I mean, I guess I could afford, you know, a two fifty or three hundred dollar my payment if I wanted to, uh -huh. but I wouldn't do it. Okay. Okay. So middle class. Karen, who drives an EV? Huh? Who drives an EV? Forward thinkers, people that care about the environment. Okay. Forward thinkers, people care about the environment. Sasha? Uh, I think of like, like maybe middle class or even higher, like kind of hippie type people <laughs> who like have chickens in their backyard okay. and stuff. Okay. And like maybe they're, they like think that because they have this car they're like environmentally friendly people and they've uh -huh. reduced their footprint. Uh -huh. Like I, I think that sometimes it can be like kind of an out, like, oh, but I drive an electric car uh -huh. so now I don't have to like recycle or whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, they're like they have enough money that they can just be like, whatever, I'm gonna buy this car and then I'm fine. Sasha, t please tell me if I'm putting <laughs> words into your mouth when I say this. Okay. Are, are EV drivers smug, superior? I think they can be. I don't think it's a rule, but I think that the that sometimes yes, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you know, EV drivers. Upper middle class women. Upper middle class women. Why women? Um, I think that women are generally less preoccupied with how they look in a car than men are. Hmm. So what are, men are all what, big and tough and I think there's some trends, yeah. 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 Like, <laughs> not, not all menning, yeah. but like. Yeah, I think there are some strong trends that men are more attracted to muscle cars as a general mm -hmm. rule than women are, and I think that women will be more likely to renounce gas-driven mm -hmm. cars mm -hmm. than men will because of the aesthetics of the thing. Okay, okay. Oh, she drives an EV. I put upper middle class white females. Why, why, why? What is this with females? Because <laughs> that's, what, that's what I see driving <laughs> EVs in, in Portland. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Upper middle class? Upper middle class. What does upper middle class mean? Um, I mean, I would say a household income of roughly about $150,000. Okay. Are EVs yeah. something that white people drive? Huh? Are EVs something that white people drive? Yes. Yes. Why do you say that? I, because I think uh, well, I, more white people care about the environment than... I, I can't... I'm just speaking from, That's all right. my, from yeah. my perspective, how I see it. Uh -huh. More white people care about the environment. Uh -huh. they, well. They lead on to believe that they care about the environment. Some people <laughs> like to say, oh, I care about the environment, so I'm driving this car because I do care about the environment, when actually it's just a way to say, um, I want to be different. Okay. So. Does that affect how you think about EVs? Mm -hmm. Women driving them, upper middle class people driving them, white people driving them? No. Okay. But that's just who you see driving. I just, that's who I see, okay. see driving. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here, a couple other questions. All right. There are incentive programs for EVs oftentimes. Sometimes it's tax credit, sometimes there's other sorts of things. So let me ask the question as it was posed to us. Would you prefer a $1,000 electric car purchase incentive directly at the car dealer? So imagine you're going, you're going to get a car. Car dealer can give you $1,000 off it's an EV. Or a $1,500 credit 
on your state income taxes. So you're going to get this money a little bit later. Does that make sense? Would you prefer a discount today of $1,000 or a credit that's going to come tomorrow for $1,500? Who would take the $1,500 credit tomorrow? Most of you. Who would take the, the discount today? Okay. It'd be okay. nice if you had an option. You well, what if you did have, have an option? Well, yeah. let's presume you had an option here. Yeah, just, Joe, you, know, you can either have $1,000 off or $1,500 later. I would want both. <laughs> you want <are> both? <laughs> Brenda's a thinker here. Are you, are, you, are you referring to $1,500 in cash or our credit on your taxes? Credit. That, that changes, I mean, that credit doesn't really... Doesn't that, go that far. That, that $1,500 okay. credit is not going to give you, you're not going to get 1000 bucks off that $1,500 yeah. credit. So uh -huh. it's just going to be somewhere around $200. Uh -huh. so we, well, it's, it's not a deduction, it's a credit. It's a credit. So, man, no, I would, yeah, I would probably wouldn't take either because I wouldn't probably mm -hmm. buy it. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, part of it is really just, you know, do you, yeah. do you prefer a smaller incentive today or a larger incentive tomorrow? But, but with the, the tax credit, would it doesn't necessarily, that wouldn't be off. <laughs> I, I mean, I, mean, I guess, is it off of your the final? tax that you owe? Or is that a deduction off of your income? Yeah, that's what I was So there's some, there's some trends that so, so yeah. you have to figure out. Yeah, okay. so, yeah. Good, good questions. I think yeah. the basic question, John, is if you can have a larger incentive tomorrow <laughs> or a smaller incentive today. Oh, the larger one tomorrow. Though. You would have the larger one tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. We have five minutes left. Okay. I want to talk a couple <laughs> more questions at you. Um, if you wanted to go to learn more about electric vehicles, after this conversation today, you've been talking to your your neighbors about EVs, want to go learn more, where would you go get information? The internet. But David, where on the internet? I uh, just Google it. You, and who, who would you trust? What sort of information would you trust? Um, the manufacturer. A uh, well, car manufacturer? Yeah, I okay. would trust a dealership. You would not trust a dealership, but you would trust the manufacturer. Yeah. So you trust Ford, but not Bob's Ford. Ford dealer. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Karen, where, where would you go to get information? Basically, I would go to the internet. And where on the What would you look for? I look for stats, you know, like basically how much it costs. To, sometimes if I need to fix something like buy a part for my car, I'll hit 15 sites or 20 sites and look and see where the cheapest part is. I do the same thing when I go to make a major purchase. So I'll just hit different sites and pick up as much information as I can about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And consumer reports. Consumer yeah. reports. So name some specific sites if you if you're an internet person. Consumer reports maybe. Reddit. Reddit. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. Sasha. I would probably also use Reddit. Like You'd use Reddit. Yeah. Okay. Would you go to one of the forums, an EV forum? Is that what you would be doing on Reddit? Yeah. I would Probably. be included in the browsing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes okay. I go to the sites that, like, um, if you're, you want to find out about a car, you punch in problems with whatever the car is, mm -hmm. and you punch on that, and you'll see a whole list of things that are, people are having problems with, and you look for something that's consistent, like if it says that it's having motor problems and you see it over and over in that year of car and that model of car, then you might have engine problems if you buy it. Quick show of hands. Raise your hand if you would trust this source if you had questions about electric vehicles, okay? Your city government. <laughs> One person and some chuckles, okay? One and a half and some chuckles, okay. Your electric utility. Couple, auto dealerships, okay, nonprofits who focus on on these sorts of issues. Many of you, okay. Um, the car manufacturers themselves, okay. Gang, we just have a couple minutes left. I'd like to ask, talk about EVs. There are people who are curious about your opinions and perspectives about electric vehicles. What would you want car manufacturers, people who provide resources for electric vehicles, to know about what you think about them, about electric vehicles? 
final sort of comments in the last two minutes we have. If you I could, think they should put more out there about them because not too many people know anything okay. about electric vehicles. Okay. Mike, what's the best way to get you information about electric vehicles? Probably email. Okay, emails. Okay, Ad advertisement okay. out there. Okay, extend their warranties to cover their batteries a longer period of time. Okay, good. What else? Distance is really important. Mm -hmm. I use cars in the same way. Getting out of town, so 100 miles is not mm -hmm. even a day trip. Okay, distance. What else? Size. Size. Make your yes. SUVs bigger, bigger um, cars, okay. electric cars. Okay, make them bigger. And sound. I mean, people are going to be attracted to a. Uh, a big car, they want it to be loud as well. So <laughs> like, you know, the some affordability seven? and all that out of the way yeah. makes them big and loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some horses over there, so. <laughs> okay. Loud to sound? Well, I have to disagree with that. Okay. <laughs> I like a loud car. <laughs> it's a little creepy when you're at a stoplight, though, and you think that it's not running, and but yeah, I that would that. be a yeah, but in proofs of safety, to have a car that makes noise, you can hear something coming yeah. behind you. And you're more aware of it. And yeah, without, yeah. With, when a vehicle that doesn't have any noise passes you, you could quite easily <laughs> step out in front of it and not think you're clear if you're not smart enough to look both ways. You know, along my mind, <laughs> that is something I worry about more as more cars are out there because you rely a lot on what I can hear coming up to something. And if I can't hear it, then. Okay. Gang, it's 5.30. I promise I'd keep you just until then, be on time when we are. I want to thank you for your time and for coming down. Give yourself a round of applause. I appreciate it. You're a If you could leave everything here, I'll clean up after you. Make sure you stop up front. They got the money for you. You earned it. And enjoy the rest of the sunny afternoon. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. And I also think about uh, when you go to electric cars, you think about the job that's for people who actually pump gas. All right. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I'm just plugging in for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no problem. Fine. Oh, great. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.